everyone. This is Shadi Ahmed, and I'm going to talk about some ways to leverage the hierarchical structure of reduced rank subspaces in order to build efficient and accurately reduced order models. So as a group here at Oklahoma State University, we are interested in building a digital twin. By digital, by digital twin, I mean some virtual or digital representation of, or, of a physical system. But the key idea here is that the physical system and its digital twin need to communicate and share information along their life cycle. So the physical system would provide some real-time observations or some sensor data. And the digital twin should be able to process this data and run multiple simulations corresponding to some what if scenarios or what if situations to make some informed decisions. And for this cycle to operate in real time or near real time, the simulation should be efficient and cheap. The traditional way to build the reduced order models is through projection based methods. Assume that this is our full order model and here U is the state vector and it lives in Rn. And in for float for float flow systems, N is very large and the simulation becomes very expensive. Now we are interested in systems where the flow, the flow field can be appro approximated as a super resolution or the contribution from a few basis functions. Here, phi represents the basis function and it, uh, it represents the underlying patterns or the dominant flow structures in the system. We can use any like model analysis techniques or model decomposition techniques like proportional decomposition to pre-compute these basis functions from some data sets. Now we need to compute the model coefficient AI, which represents the weight of each basis function. Simply, we plug this approximation into our governing equation and we perform a Galerican projection to compute our Galerican ROM or G ROM. To illustrate the idea, assume that the full rank representation of the, of the flow field U can be defined using three basis functions, phi1, phi2, phi3. If we do the Galerican projection, we get an equation for A1, A2, A3, which represents the full order trajectory. Now suppose that we seek a rank two approximation of, of the flow field to reduce the computational cost. We get an equation for A1 and A2, but we introduce a projection error or a representation error because U now will be approximated as A1 phi1 plus A2 phi2. There will be no phi3 component. In addition to that, if we look at the equations for A1 and A2, we see that they depend on A3. As, so because all the scales or all the modes are coupled and they interact with each other. But if we are solving for A1 and A2 and we don't know A3, so we simply ignore the effect of A3 on A1 and A2 under the assumption that this effect is very small. And unfortunately, this, sometimes this effect is not that small, especially for the long-term predictions. And the error, this error is known as the closure error. And we need to make up for it by introducing a closure term or a correction term. So our test case is the vortex merger problem. We start with two vortices within a small distance and they rotate in the same direction. By the time they interact with each other to form one big vortex. We build the reduced order model using some data sets corresponding to some values of the Reynolds number, and we test the performance at different values of the Reynolds number. In the beginning, I will focus on the closure problem, which is the effect on, of the truncated scales onto the dynamics of the retained scales. We extend the variational multi-scale framework to address the closure problem, and this method starts with defining a hierarchy of subspaces with increasing resolution. Like we have x1, x1 plus x3, x1 plus x2 plus x3, and so on. Then we divide the solution or the flow field into a component u1 that lives in x1, component u2 that lives in x2, and so on. Then we perform the Galerican projection to get an equation that describes the dynamics of a1, a2, a3. Now we assume that we are interested only in the component u1, so we consider the equation for a1. But again, the dynamics, depend, the dynamics of A1 depends on the remaining scales as well. So we do the truncation and ignore this effect, but then we define the closure models to add some correction. And we believe that the proportional decomposition or POD is a natural fit for this VMS methodology, because in POD, we get a hierarchy of basis functions that are sorted based on their contribution to the total variance of the data or in the data or the total energy in the system. So now we present the key advantage of using the VMS methodology. 
First, we consider the two scale VMS where we split our modes into resolved scales and unresolved scales. Then we approximate the interactions between these two scales. And this is basically what most people have been doing in the ROM closure community. We extend this to the three scale VMS where we split our resolved scales into resolved large scales and resolved small or medium scales. Finally, we have this unresolved smallest scales. Now, instead of dealing with interactions between phi and psi as one part or one model or one component, we have more flexibility in defining the interactions between phi 1 and phi 2, phi 1 and psi, phi 2 and psi. So we can have multiple closure models that work together or coordinate, to, uh, coordinate to goes, uh, together to improve the predictions. Now the question is, how to define these interactions. We use deep neural network with memory embedding to take care of this part. In particular, we use the long short term memory or LSTM architecture to define a mapping between the resolved scales and the correction that needs to be added to the ROM equation in order to match the true dynamics from some data. On top of that, we propose a physics related machine learning closure and in this, we believe that if we know any information about the system, we should find a way to, to inject this information into our model. Here, we utilize a layer called concatenation to inject or provide some physics-based features into the neural network in latent space. In particular, here, we use the projection or the inner product between the governing equation and the ROM basis functions as our, our physics-based uh, features. And this projection actually inherits the structure of the dynamics from the full order model to the low order model. For example, in the navier stokes equation, we have a quadratic nonlinearity term, which is a convection term. And it is reflected here in, the, in this quadratic nonlinearity term here. So in the result, we will see that adding this information improves accuracy and the prediction and reduces the corresponding uncertainty. Here we compare the machine learning closure with the physics guided machine learning closure with two level or two scale VMS framework. In particular, we run an ensemble of models with 10 different neural networks initialized with different seed numbers for the weights and the biases before we do the training. We see that on average, we, if we consider the mean trajectory given by the solid blue line, the prediction is much better than the Galileo norm, which doesn't use any closure or the, any correction. However, looking at the uncertainty levels, we see that the ML model has larger uncertainty than the PGML. We repeat the analysis, but comparing the two level and the three level framework. And the result, and here we see the result for the ML closure. We see that significant improvements are obtained with the three level VMS, even without injecting any physics based features. Finally, we compare the VMS2 and VMS3 with the physics guided machine learning closure. And we see that the three level VMS framework with the physics guided machine learning closure provides the most accurate and the robust results. Here we can see the prediction of the vorticity field at the final time with different approaches. And the true projection here is the best that we could get from six modes. GROM is what we actually get due to the neglecting the effect of the truncation into the ROM dynamics. And in the PGML VMS3, we still use six modes, but we approximate the closure effect using the three level VMS framework with physics guided machine learning model of closure. And we see that the PGML VMS3 is very close to the true projection, which means that the closure error is treated very well. However, compared to the full order model solution, we still suffer from a large projection error. And in the next two or three slides, I will introduce one way to reduce this projection error. We introduced the nonlinear proportional decomposition technique to reduce the projection error. Remember that we split our flow field into resolved large scales, resolved small scales, and unresolved scales. And we use a Galerkin based reduced order model with variational multi scale closure for the resolved large scales and resolved small scales. Now we deal with the unresolved smallest scales. And usually we have a large number of these small scales, and resolving all of them can be computationally expensive. So we use a feed forward to encoder to identify the intercorrelation between these scales and they learn a small or a compressed representation of these scales. Then we use an LSTM model to propagate this latent space variable Z forward in time. Here are the results from combining the PGML with three level VMS closure plus nonlinear POD for the projection error. And we see that the prediction here is very close to the full order model solution. 
And in this case, we use or select a total of 20 modes, since as we saw, it, they capture like almost 99% of the total energy in the system, in this case. And with that, I conclude my presentation. And thank you for your time and looking forward to meeting you in person during the conference in Chicago.